is my 11 year old golden retriever cocker spaniel mix he was a rescue he is a very sweet dog as you can see just because i'm talking about him his tail is wagging but i just want to tell a little story about how we have completely changed his regimen of eating and supplements because as you can see he has this limp and it turns out that starting around easter of this year he was having a little bit of a limp he was much furrier then and we went to the vet initially the vet thought that he had um, injured himself which i agreed with or maybe it was some arthritis um, he was so fluffy that he really couldn't appreciate anything abnormal underneath of all that fur so he was put on prednisone and he was given a cortisone shot and he sometimes seemed like he was better sometimes seemed like he was the same and after about a week um, I really was uncomfortable with the fact that he still seemed like there wasn't a vast improvement um, there was one night in particular I will say that after we first went to the vet it was a Friday evening he seemed really not himself and really sick and my son even said to me that he thought he was dying that night um, but he was okay the next morning and we continued with the regimen um, so about a week after we saw the the vet initially and there was some intermittent um, improvement and then kind of still limping um, and he seemed really hot my husband and I decided to go ahead and give him the summer shave down um, and when we did this we realized or I saw that he had like an obvious deformity of his right shoulder and I thought initially he had maybe um, dislocated his shoulder I didn't know quite what was going on so I made him an appointment the next morning and I went back to the vet and the vet told me that that was indeed a mass um, so I don't know if you can see but right here is where the mass is on him so that mass is what's causing all of his limping um, he was initially more in discomfort and he would go and lay in that kennel right there a lot during the day. When he was happy and excited that someone was home, he would come out tail up. So um, basically when we went to the vet, the vet said, yes, this is a mass. And as you can see, there's also some skin changes on him. Um, but I will note that he is a dog that in the past few years has always had issues with like and sebaceous cysts and things so the moral of the story is the vet said you know this looks like it's it looks like it's um, osteosarcoma and this can be a pretty aggressive thing and the treatment is usually amputation chemo whatever um, but he said it's still usually very aggressive so what we decided to do was to bring the dog back on Monday the vet and I decided to have him come back on Monday when he was fasting so he could get some x-rays just to make sure that there wasn't anything else going on this was definitely a mass um, and that we could take some pathology um, from like the mass and that was the plan so over that weekend um, I noticed that he also had a lot of lymph node swelling right here I mean it was huge it was the size of a golf ball if not larger so when we went back Monday morning and Luke was fasting um, I pointed that out to the vet as well and he went ahead and he drained some fluid from there and from his shoulder and he took some x-rays all of that um, while un while being sedated so he could get the best images and he said to me that he thought that the mass had gotten bigger that could be a reassuring sign because cancer wasn't usually that fast um, however he, when he called me later on that day he said that all signs pointed to osteosarcoma and he said that the x-ray showed in fact it was a mass and that he could even see a lot of characteristic um, like um, lesions around his lungs and a lot of his new skin changes were all indicative of osteosarcoma so basically he said to make him comfortable um, well he gave me the option of whether or not I wanted to do um, the traditional approach and try that or um, just to make him comfortable and happy so I told him at this point in time I was not wanting to amputate and do all of that other stuff and that we would 
um, bring him home and figure out what we were going to do. He did send him home with another prescription of prednisone. He said that might relieve some of the inflammation he has going on. However, um, my husband and I had talked and what we wanted to do was try some um, CBD oil for him. We had heard a lot of positive things. Someone in our family had recently had cancer and had some um, some wounds and like some oral lesions secondary to some of the chemo and radiation effects and that the CBD oil was what worked the best. So I said, if it gives him pain control, if it helps him, yes, let's please do it. So we decided to go ahead and do that. We ordered some and we got it overnight sent to us. And from this point on, Luke has been on CBD oil twice a day. He has um, treats, dog treats that are also um, hemp oil with C naturally occurring CBD oil in them. So he gets that twice a day as well. We have now switched him over to a homemade raw diet. And also I am supplementing it with some of the Instinct raw brand um, dog food. It is very costly, um, but we're trying our hardest not to have anything added. And I'm not talking about the dry dog food. I'm talking about the actual raw meat frozen stuff. Um, so he's on that. He's on the CBD oil, the hemp treats. I also am giving him dandelion and milk thistle supplements in his food. And then I found some holistic vitamins that have turmeric and ginger and all of that stuff. Um, and he is doing really well. Um, this is probably his medicine setting in right now that you see here. So this happens maybe about a half an hour to an hour after I give him his dose. He's just had his morning dose. But throughout the rest of the day, he is up, his tail is up. He goes, um, and the C-A-R, I have to spell it or else he'll be up and looking to go there. Um, he is outside, adventurous. It's just that limp is dragging him down and he stays out of the kennel most of the day. Um, so I just wanted to give an update. That's been about two weeks um, from when we initially got the diagnosis. Um, I will note that we did not opt to send off any of the pathology. Um, our vet is very practical and he said that really there isn't any point to send it off and spend $300 or so on getting the pathology done on what he drained off the dog. He said as many years as he's been doing this with what he sees on his exam, the history of what's been going on, the diagnostic work that he did do with the x-rays and things, he said he's never seen this not be what he says it is. Um, so our philosophy is so long as the dog is happy, comfortable, doing well, um, to keep on doing what we're doing and he is and I will tell you some of his things have gotten a little bit better like the CBD oil does have some anti-inflammatory um, properties so around some of these little scabs and lesions you see the skin had been um, quite thick and there was like um, some like subcutaneous um, like mass underneath there those have pretty much resolved. I mean, obviously he still has this large mass here um, that doesn't seem to be that much different. And you can see how he holds his paw strangely, but um, some of that is better. That lymph node has not um, gotten a lot bigger. As a matter of fact, I had to look for it this morning. So that's very reassuring to me. Um, overall, he's doing great. And I just wanted to give the story of Luke. Oh. Um, and I hate to say this stuff in front of him. The vet did say it could it'd be about two to three weeks. So we're about two weeks right now. And I hate to say that and press my luck in front of him. But Luke, are you a happy boy? You're a happy boy? Maybe I should take a video of you when I haven't just medicated you.